concept of a witch pops up all over the world, depicted in various forms throughout time. When you hear the word witch, you most likely think of a few things. The old woman flying on a broom with the moon behind her and a black cat nestled up next to her. Or you might think of a new age or a Wiccan. Or you might think of an occultist or a spiritualist. Or you might think of a Satanist. So where do these ideas come from? Why did people hunt witches? And are witches Satanists? The concept of the witch's sabbath plays a pivotal role in shaping the both whimsical and eerie stereotypes associated with witches. This gathering is where witches were thought to perform unnatural acts, often involving the devil. In recent times, medieval tales of nocturnal spirit groups have been broadly categorized as the wild hunt. This concept encompasses various entities, the dead, living people in spirit or physical form, and non-human spirits or demons. It's often led by a divine figure who could be either female like Diana or male like Odin. This concept can be a starting point from where the idea of a witch's Sabbath has originated. Eva Pox, using material primarily from Southeastern Europe, highlighted the influence of popular folklore and its roots in ancient thought systems. She drew a distinction between historical beliefs and actual witch gatherings. These accounts merge recollection of real societies of folk magicians who were not necessarily pagans. Additionally, in these narratives, ghosts were used as symbols of lust. They were seen as representations of the devil. Early modern artistic depictions portray the devil as a man with hooved feet, further intertwining the imagery of ghosts with demonic symbolism. The concept of the Black Mass, particularly in association with the Witch's Sabbath, was notably reinforced by the Catholic Church in 900 AD with Canon Episcopi, and later again with Malleus Maleficarum. This canon denies the reality of witches flying through the night, attending gatherings with Diana, the goddess of the hunt, or performing other supernatural feats. Instead, it asserts that such beliefs are delusions instigated by the devil. The canon Episcopi plays a crucial role in the church's early stance on witchcraft, emphasizing skepticism towards claims of witchcraft and supernatural powers and served as a reference in later medieval witchcraft beliefs and trials. Then we come to the Malleus Maleficarum. The Malleus Maleficarum, published in the 1400s, is essentially a witch hunting guide, but also laid out a blueprint for the eventual Black Mass. The Malleus Maleficarum says there are three elements that are necessary for witchcraft the evil intentions of the witch, the assistance of the devil, and the permission from God. Section 1 of the text ends with the claim that witches enter a pact with Satan to allow them to perform magical acts. Section 2 details how witches cast spells and remedies that can counteract witchcraft by those who have been affected. Section 3 details a guide to conduct a witch trial, including the process of assembling accusations, interrogation, which also includes torture, and the legal aspect of charging the accused. Starting in the 1200s, irreverent and heretical versions of the Mass written in ecclesiastical Latin and known as Drinker's Masses or Gambler's Masses began to emerge. These parodies mock the plight of monks addicted to alcohol and gambling. Some of the earliest examples of these Latin parodies are found in the Carmina Burana, a medieval Latin poetry collection from around 1230. The first explicit linkage of the Black Mass with the Witch's Sabbath appears in 
Florimond de Raymond's 1597 French work, The Antichrist. The most elaborate early modern European descriptions of the Black Mass are from the Basque Witch Trials between 1609 and 1614. Scholars like Emma Wilby have suggested that the focus on the Black Mass in these trials stem from a dynamic interplay between interrogators eager to uncover evidence of the ritual and Basque populace engaged in unconventional religious practices including cursing masses, liturgical disorder, and the illicit use of Catholic rituals and magical rites. From the 16th to the 19th century, several French authors, including Jean Bodin, Marquis de Sade, and Georges Carl Eisman, wrote fictional literature on the subject of the Black Mass. By far one of the most critical flashpoints occurred during a famous scandal known as the Affair of Poisons. This scandal unfolded during the reign of King Louis XIV and highlighted the dark underbelly of the French court, revealing a network of criminal activity that ranged from poisoning and sorcery to Satanism and other nefarious activities. As for convictions, there were 36 deaths, 34 from execution, and two that died under torture. Though it's hard to say what actually happened, especially regarding Satanism. When further examined by Anne Somerset in her book The Affair of Poisons, the evidence seems a bit shaky. For example, in the conclusion portion of the book, Somerset claims, La Rainey took the view that the descriptions of child sacrifice supplied by Marie Montvoisin and Etienne Guiberg were so detailed and vivid that they must have been present at these events. But his reasoning was flawed, according to Somerset. History abounds with cases where witches have confessed to participating in atrocities and abominations, which we know to be fictitious. Remember the Malleus Maleficarum about interrogating people, including torture? Well, we know torturing is not a good way to get a legitimate confession. It's been largely debunked. Witch hysteria really escalated in Europe during the 1400s, with many accused witches being tortured. By the following century, witch hunts became widespread, and the majority of the accused were executed, typically by burning at the stake or hanging. Women who were single, widowed, or otherwise marginalized in society were particularly vulnerable. From 1500 to 1660, it is estimated that up to 80,000 people, 80% 80 of whom were women, were suspected of collaborating with the devil. The Salem Witch Trials are among the most infamous. Reverend Samuel Paris, known for a strict nature, became Salem Village's first ordained minister in 1689. During this period, over 200 individuals were accused of witchcraft, and 20 were executed. Witch hunting was not exclusive to Europe and North America, though. It was a global phenomenon. For instance, the 1857 rebellion against British rule in India led to a significant witch hunt among northern Indian tribes. 19th century North America, Navajo chief Manuelito executed over 40 political rivals on witchcraft charges. So, what is modern witchcraft today then? Wicca is a modern neo pagan religion that was developed in England during the first half of the 20th century. Wicca is heavily centered around the worship of nature and includes a deep respect for the earth. Most Wiccans believe in a dual deity, the goddess and the god who represent the feminine and masculine forces of nature. Wicca incorporates the practice of magic and holds rituals on full moons, new moons, and during Sabbat festivals, which mark the changing of the seasons. These rituals often include casting a circle, spell casting, chanting, candle magic, and other rites. 
The most famous moral guideline in Wicca is the Wiccan Reed, which states, And it harm none, do what ye will. This emphasizes the importance of not causing harm to others. Even though Wiccans may identify or call themselves witches, they don't fit the typical definition of a witch laid out in the beginning of this video. There are also various identities of witches which are similar to Wiccan in practice, but have various amounts of New Age rituals and beliefs. Then we come to the big question. What are Satanists then? The seemingly majority of those who identify as Satanists and who follow a loose organized belief system either belong to the Church of Satanism or the Satanic Temple. Neither group believes in a supernatural or theistic Satan. They are more anti-theist and secular in nature. The Church of Satan's rituals are theatrical, serving as a psychodrama to release emotions. And contrary to myths, they do not involve sacrifice or illegal activities. The Satanic Temple is similar to the Church of Satan, but seems to function more as a political advocacy group. For example, they have held public demonstrations and protests to help protect First Amendment rights in school, as well as to advocate to ban corporal punishment in schools. And additionally, protecting women's right to choose. And of course, you do have your actual nut jobs who do worship a literal theistic Satan like black metal bands, neo-Nazis, smaller satanic cults that vary in their beliefs, and infamous serial killers. In conclusion, we have identified why there are so many different ideas of a witch. The canon Episcopi, a medieval text, and later works like the Malleus Maleficarum, shape the church's views on witchcraft, influencing the stereotype of satanic witch. This concept, plus the pagan roots of the wild hunt, have combined itself into the idea of the witch's sabbath, and later the traditions of the Basque population and the satirical masses like the gamblers and drinkers masses both help to influence the creation of the black mass. And then, the rise of witch hysteria in Europe from the 1400s led to widespread witch hunts and executions, a phenomenon that was not limited to Europe but observed globally. In modern times, this historical perception of witches has influenced contemporary practices like Wicca. This evolution of the witch archetype reflects a complex interplay of cultural, religious, and societal factors over the centuries. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel.